Thank you for coming back. Uh, we're continuing our study of the life of David. Uh, we've uh, gotten to chapter 12 of 2 Samuel, where Nathan comes to visit uh, David after his sin with uh, Bathsheba and having Uriah the Hittite killed in chapter 11. Uh, chapter 12, like I said, uh, the Lord seeks him out, David, sends Nathan to him with a, uh, with a message, and uh, David uh, confesses his sins and uh, of what he has done. He sees he has sinned against the Lord, and uh, Nathan tells him that, uh, you know, he wasn't going to die, but uh, things were, uh, he was going to reap what he had sown in his sin. Uh, but the great thing about the uh, David's sin, and like I said, about the scriptures being so open about what had happened, nothing is covered, but we get now to see David's heart. I mean, we saw where he said, I sinned, but now we'll get to see his heart because we're going to go into Psalm 51 and Psalm 32, the two Psalms that are written specifically from this, this episode uh, of his forgiveness uh, that he had gotten for his sin. Um, before we start in Psalm 51, we'll um, open in prayer. Hey, Father, again, I thank you for this day. Thank you for many blessings. I thank you for your servant, David. Uh, thank you for his his faults and his victories. I thank you for his heart and his uh, willingness to see sin as you, obviously, as you see it, as, as you see it, Father. And if he confessed it to him, he was faithful to what you had done. He let you use him, Father. And I pray that you just help us to learn much in our lives that we can uh, see the sin in our lives and confess it to you and allow us to be restored to fellowship as well. And I pray, amen. Psalm 51, verses 1 through 19, it says, uh, To the chief magician, uh, the psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had gone into Bathsheba, uh, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my, tra our tra my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sins always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned. I have done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak, and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, uh, you desire truth on the inner, inward parts, and the hidden part you, uh, you, make, you make me to know wisdom. Purge me from his purge me with hyssop that I may be cleansed. Wash me that I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones that have, you have broken may rejoice. Hide your your face from my sins, blot out all my iniquities, create a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor take away your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of the bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvations. For my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth praise. For you have, for you do not desire sacrifice, or else shall I give it to you. You, you do not delight in burnt offering, the sacrifice of God, uh, of, a, of a broken spirit, of a broken and contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to, to Zion, build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of the righteous, of righteousness. With the burnt offering and the whole burnt offering, that shall be uh, offer bulls on your altar. Um, the psalm itself expresses uh, clearly uh, David's uh, attitude of uh, uh, one of the clearest, actually. Uh, representation we have in scripture of what repentance is and, and David's attitude of repentance. Uh, you know, it's uh, not just uh, emotion. It's not just going through a trend. It's deep felt. Uh, and it's a need to see 
God's mercy and God's forgiveness. That's what David was looking for, and that's what David was was uh, was giving uh, his repentance for. Uh, David's confession, you know, gives us an example. You know, uh, if you look at it, first thing, there's no excuses. David put the blame fully on himself. And how many times do we, you know, put an excuse in there of why we did what we did, or why we got caught what we did? Uh, it's not it's not a half-hearted repentance, uh, you know. Uh, he's totally into it. Uh, he knows what he's done. He sees sin as the way God sees it. Um, uh, he, there's a lack of sorrow over sin, you know, is what we usually have. And David doesn't have that. It's not half-hearted. Um, you know, uh, and the desire to... Uh, experience pardon you know he wants to feel the pardon that the sin has caused him he, the, the grief that's there um you know david through his confession you, you see hope he has a, a a promise that he is looking for the lord to give to him because of uh because of who god is like of course because of his tender mercies um but like I said, with David, his repentance is there with hope of the confession that the confession is going to be accepted. With the not hoping like oh, I wish I hope it would happen, but the hope is that it's a it's a rest that God's going to do. Uh, you know, it's an assurance of what God's going to do. Um, what you see in here also is uh, if you look at how much the verbs in there is like. Uh, over and over wash me cleanse me uh purge me make me create me uh renew me uh, cast me not out uphold me restore me teach me you know over and over what god what david is asking god to do what god wants to do god wants to please god wants to wash god wants to restore and david has gotten to the position where with his wholehearted confession to allow God to work to allow God to do that verses 1 to 7 uh, he tells him to cleanse me um, you know what David has done is sees the filth that's on the inside and says it needs to get washed away uh, we if you walk into a mud puddle or something you see the dirt and grime on you you get cleaned up well David sees that on the inside and a lot of times we don't see the dirt of our sin the way God sees the sin. And here David sees it and says, wash me. Not only cleanse me, not only wash me, but wash me thoroughly. Scour it. Scrub as hard as you have to to get rid of it. Um, that's what David's done. He sees himself as being defiled. And when, in order for us to have repentance and have the proper, proper repentance for confession, we need to see that sin defiles us. It's not an oops or my bad, or uh, you know, a small thing. It's 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 large. It defiles us. It, 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 and David sees his sin against against the Lord, against God. It's not just against Bathsheba, not just against Uriah, not against j just Joab, because all these people had parts in what happened here. But the sin was David's sin against God. That he, see, that he says, you know, uh, he says, wash me. Wash me is pretty in, important to the Jewish uh, faith. Uh, we see in Genesis and Exodus that washing meant to uh, a new beginning of life, a, new, a cleansing, a cleaning, a new beginning of life, new garments, new, new clothes. It was all that way. And David's looking here saying, I need a new start. Wash it away. I need a start. And no, it's not holding on to the sin or holding on to a favorite sin. It says, God, wash it away. I want you to take it from me. I want you to cleanse it for me. Uh, verse 3 says, I acknowledge my transgressions. Uh, you know, do we call sin the way God calls sin? Do we need to, we need to acknowledge what we're doing and what we have done wrong and what sin is? Uh, and David here, he acknowledges it. He, um, his, uh, you know, name names name it out, what it is uh, between you and the Lord, your your iniquity, your sins. We know you want Lord to to cleanse the sin, but we need to have we need to recognize what the sin is ourselves. 
uh, you know, that's part of the renewing that God is going to do, and it's part of renewing it that David is looking for. Uh, he's looking for that fellowship with the, with the Lord to come back, and with the sin there, it stops it. And David is feeling it, and he wants that to go away. And part of it is for, like I said, is one to acknowledge the transgressions and to let the Lord cleanse. Um, you know, uh, Nathan tells him when, as soon as David said, "I confess," uh, Nathan tells him that his sins are his sins are washed, taken away, or washed away. What a great thing that no sin is too great for forgiveness. Not many of us are going to do the type of sins that David has just done, but no sin is too great for forgiveness. For forgiveness, uh, David confessed his sin to the Lord, uh, and he submitted to the Lord's will that you know. Uh, whatever God decides to do is right. Whatever God decides to do is right. And a lot of times we want God to, uh, you know, we want to confess our sin and God take away any pain from the sin, take away the consequences of sin. And that's not what confession is. Confession is take away the pain. Confession is getting the relationship back with the Lord. Getting the, uh, you know, calling sin what sin is, letting God cleanse and letting God do whatever is necessary. He didn't say it's right and just. And that's where David was. Um, and part of what God's forgiving of what, what, what David um, was to restore the fellowship back to him. Uh, verse five, he says, you know, we're born sinners. I was born a sinner, and I did what naturally comes to me, and it's not what it should have been. Uh, he was a child of the king. He was anointed, a uh, child of God. He was anointed. He was part of, uh, you know, the spirit was on him, but, you know, David so easily fell back into the natural inclinations of what, what, he, what he did, um, you know, uh, to please himself instead of, or please others instead of the Lord. Um, and that's where David started to follow his natural instincts. And we need to realize that that is in us to so always be there. And we need, them, we need to admit it and let the Lord give us victory over it. Um, the hyssop that he calls in there in verse 7, that's the shrubbed, what's a, it's a hairy type of shrub. <laughs> uh, and they would dip it into a liquid and they would sprinkle either blood or, or water onto the people that needed ceremonial cleaning. Cleansing. So that's what he's looking for here is the ceremonial cleansing uh, of, by uh, the priest or by God in, this, in situations what he's asking for. For us, we've got that cleansing through the precious blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Uh, we're not looking for God to take away our sins for salvation. We're looking for God and to uh, repent and confession is to restore the relationship. Uh, and that's what David is looking for as well. Uh, we And you actually you can see that. In verses 8 to 12 where he says restore me you know uh, David's sin affected basically every part of his body you know his eyes were wandered his mind was messed up his ears his bones uh, his spirit his hands his lips you know David was like a weak old man all of a sudden I mean, he, David committed this sin when he was 50 years old. He was not old by any, any imagination, but to him and what the, the pressure that the sin had brought on him, he felt like he was an old man. And David is looking for, uh, his, basically his sin has ravaged him. And sometimes we don't see how much sin ravages us and, go, and takes, takes away our, our, our strength, our vitality, uh, takes away our... our uh, the things we want to do, uh, you know, it just beats us up, beats us down. Um, but David knew that he needed more than just cleansing. That's why he said to restore me. You know, it was important to be cleansed, but to David, it's more important that the cleansing doesn't stop, that I get restored back to serving you acceptably. And that's where we need to focus with what our uh, repentance is to be restored and go back into fellowship with the Lord so we can serve him acceptably um he said to uh make us join the lord within him you know uh, he's he wants to face the lord to shine upon him again 
uh, it says joy and gladness. That's a Hebrew uh, meaning for deep joy. It's not just ease of peace, but a deep joy of experience that we could only have through God and through his, his working in us. Um, and part of that was to create a new heart in us. Uh, within him to you know a steadfast heart not one that vacillates up and down and goes with the goes with the tides but one that is set on the rock and that's where David was asking for it and that's where he was, saw his joy and gladness was come in because he would be given a new once a new heart and one that doesn't go away one that doesn't doesn't change one that could be set and, and 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 set upon the Lord and what the Lord wants uh, David knew that, well, you said I was conceived in sin, that his inner heart was a source of the problem, that the heart led him astray, and he needs God to change that heart, to, to uh, you know, to make it pure, create a new heart in him. Uh, you know, joy and blessings, they're incapable of happening as long as we're dealing with the heart that we're born with. But we need God to change our hearts. Uh, you know, God can work great miracles when we bring a broken heart. And that's what he wants is our broken heart. He mends broken hearts. And that's what he got David to, to be at finally position where he says, yes, Lord, I need a new heart. I need one that doesn't wander, one that doesn't scheme, one that doesn't look out for my own benefit, but one that looks out for you. Um, and why do you want him to have cleansing and restoration so he can get to verse 13 and 19? It says, so he can use me. This is what David, David didn't want his sin to stop God from using him. He wanted to be used and wanted the Lord to, he wanted to be God's servant. Uh, that's what his desire. He didn't want to, he wanted to regain that ministry. He is the king. Uh, and God was going to, he wanted to lead his people. He wanted to be that shepherd that the Lord had, had designed for him to be, and he didn't want to be taken away. He had seen how um, Saul sinned, and it was taken away, and David didn't want that. Like Saul didn't confess Saul. What did Saul do? He blamed others. Uh, David didn't do that. He says, I sinned. It's my fault. I did it. And that's what the Lord wanted him to do. He wanted that broken heart. So that God can use and God can mend and God God can work because God's in the business of restoring. And this is what he's able to do with David was to restore him because David came in that way. Um, he wasn't denying uh, the importance of the sacrifices in, in the last part, you know, the, of the Jewish sacrifices. You know, if you wanted offerings, I bring offerings. But it's, God doesn't want offerings. He doesn't want deeds. He wants our heart. He wants us. Um, you know, God tells him, don't you bring me no broken lambs. I don't want no broken sacrifices, but bring me a broken heart that I can work with. And that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to have the right heart attitude. If the heart attitude is not right, it doesn't matter how many offerings you bring. It doesn't matter what you've done. It's where's your heart. And David sees that. <laughs> And, he, and he's uh, issuing, letting everybody know that's where we need to see it as well. That repentance, restoration, and being used to the Lord is a matter of where the heart is. Uh, and David is using that, you know. Um, you know, confession is, is, confession is, are you sorry for sin? Uh, you know, are you genuinely trying to stop it? But are you wanting the Lord to use you? Uh, you know, that's the kind of repentance that God's looking for. He's re looking for repentance that is a broken heart. Um, like I said, he doesn't want broken animals for a sacrifice, but he does want a broken heart. Uh, verse 13 um, says, and God, uh, you know, when God, uh, when God forgave uh, his sins and restored his fellowship, that he would t reach out and teach others uh, and to need forgiveness and reconciliation. Um, this ch uh, chapter 51 actually came before chapter 32 because chapter 32 is the fulfillment of David's promise here to teach others about the forgiveness that's there. You know, David had felt God's forgiveness 
And the more you feel God's forgiveness, you more you want to tell others. And that's what he that's what he said. And chapter 32 of Psalm 32 uh, is actually the uh, fulfillment of that promise to uh, to teach others. Uh, verse 13 it says, "And I will teach uh, transgress." Teach transgressions your ways, transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. That was David's desires: is that others would learn, and others would see what what God is. That we have a God who wants to forgive. We have a God who wants you to to have a broken spirit and a broken heart, so He can use you and mend you and make you whole. Um, Psalm thirty-two. Verses 1 to 11, with, like I said, this is David's fulfillment of his promise in Psalm 51. This is blessed he, he is whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old, though all the, the, through the groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of the summer. I acknowledge, I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the tra my transgressions and the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in that time when you shall be found. Surely in the flood of great waters you shall not, you sh they shall not come near, they shall not come near him. Um, for you are, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from my trouble. You, you shall surround me with all the songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the the animal, like the horse or the, or like the mule, who has no understanding, which must be harnessed with a bit and bridle, unless they come to you, lest they come not too near to you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but those who trust in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, and you righteous, and shout for joy, all you that are upright heart. Um, David's confession to the Lord of how his, again, his adultery, his murder, uh, his uh, deception, has, uh, and the forgiveness that he got in, uh, in, from Nathan in, Psalm, in Samuel 12, 2 Samuel 12, He's repeated in Psalm 51, and here again, uh, like I said, in Psalm 51, 13, he vowed to teach others. And here's where he started to teach others, uh, is, is this, this psalm here. This psalm is actually called a mystical song, psalm, which means a skillful song or a song of instruction. And that's what David's doing. He's instructing and teaching. Matter of fact, the word instruct in verse 8 is mescal, with the same word. Um, that's there you know this psalm is a psalm that the jews uh will uh do in the on the uh at the close of the day of atonement they'll do that annually uh the catholic faith will repeat this psalm on ash wednesday unfortunately for many of us we are unfamiliar with this psalm and we need to be familiar with the psalm familiar with it with the what god is doing and what god is teaching and what what david is teaching because of what he went went through he is able to teach um the first thing he teaches is, is, the, is the blessings of his acceptance uh you know uh, blessed is those who transgress aggression is forgiven whose sin is covered Blessed is a man whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, whose spirit has no deceit. You know, the blessedness of being accepted. David didn't open the psalm with, oh, here's all my sins. Here's all I screwed up. Here's all the things I've done. He's opened the psalm by telling the people, hey, listen, what the blessing God has. God wants to forgive sinners. Something new. Something that, uh, you know, a lot of people look at, at, at God and figure he's there to punish. And no, God's there to forgive sinners. Forgiveness is always part of God's love, his loving nature to us. Uh, as he wants to forgive. Um, he, he's, 
been with Israel all along. He's telling them to turn their heart to the Lord. Uh, he reveals it to David. He demonstrates it, his love for us and his willingness to forgive by sending Jesus Christ to the cross because he loved us that much. And that's he wanted to forgive sins that much that he would send his son. Um, these verses here will uh, see very little, a few different aspects of God's forgiveness. You know, he um, he forgives disobedience. He puts it out of his sight. He clears the record. There's no more guilt. God's not going to say, well, you remember when you did that? I, I, I can't forgive that. No, God clears all record, clears all the guilt. Matter of fact, uh, Paul uses verses 1 and 2 in Romans when he's preaching and arguing that salvation is, above, is uh, by grace alone. It's not by works because God wants to forgive. And it's God's God who forgives. And uh, we have that through Jesus Christ. We have forgiveness um, by faith in Christ. You know, we have salvation through Christ, but we also have forgiveness that brings us restoration through through Jesus Christ. And the restoration, uh, uh, it started at the cross and it needs to continue because we are not done sinning. We continue to sin. We continue to, to uh, screw up and we continue to let that be a separation of us and of and our relationship with the Lord. And God says, come to me still. And he wants to restore um verses three and four we see the folly that david went through with, with uh, not confessing the sin that the sin was really eating him up uh he felt like an old man uh uh he has it's almost a year since he's, the sin started um when nathan came um spurgeon has a great great uh, quote he says uh, god's eyes, god does not permit his children's sin successfully he doesn't let us sin successfully. He wants to always draw us back to him. He wants, he will always chasten his children. Um, uh, John Doan says, sin is a serpent. That he that covers sin, um, all you're doing is keeping it warm. That it may sting you more fiercely and disperse venom more effectively. Because we've kept that serpent warm. It allows him to continue to attack because it's still there. And it needs to confess. It's, it'll continue to get stronger, continue to bind us, to hold us down. It could continue to destroy us if, if we leave sin as unconfessed. Um, you know, chastening is what the Lord does for his children. Uh, and chastening, that's not criminal judgment for sin. Chastening is a loving father dealing with his disobedient children to bring them willingly to a place of surrender. That's what God wants for us to do, is to surrender to what he says sin is, surrender to what we've done and admit to what we've done. You know, Surrendering and coming to him freely to let him work. Um, we see in, in Hebrews uh, 12, you know, chastening is a proof that we're God's children. That he loves us and that we are generally his children. Um, but with David, by, by uh, not, con not confessing to sin, by trying to conceal it, he became a physical wreck. Um, sin and the uh, consequences of sin uh, is far reaching. Uh, it wasn't just a sin against uh, Uriah and Bathsheba and, and Joab. Uh, against the Lord, but also against himself, and it it it, it continued to drive him down. Um, you know, uh, David experienced great pain. He experienced great loss, uh, and he was wanting the Lord to bring it back, bring him back. And that's part of what drove him to confession is the fact that I'm missing the fellowship I had with the Lord, and I need that back. And what stopped that fellowship? He did and his own sin and then you come to verses five through seven we see that the ways uh, of deliverance um god brought the prophet nathan to, J to david he confronted him with sin uh, and uh he he confesses he says i confess that i've sinned against the lord 
um, and his sin was put away. Uh, you know, God delivers. God does not say, "I want you to confess your sin. I don't want. You, I want you to uh, to. Uh, uh, I don't. I, I want to beat you up with it." No, God wants you to bring it to Him so He can just bury it. Um, you know, when David said, "I confess," God didn't say, "Well, okay, now you have to." Uh, you have to do penance, or you have to do uh, uh, probation, or you have to earn your way back into fellowship with me. No, that's not what God does. God wants to confess with a broken heart, let God mend and do the work. Um, and God forgave him right away, is what Nathan told him. Um, but, you know, what is confession? Confession is basically agreeing with God. What sin is, agreeing to see sin the way God sees sin uh, and, uh, you know, and seeing that in us and confessing it that we have fallen short of, of, of what, what it is. And, you know, like David, don't make excuses. David didn't make any excuses. He didn't pull any punches and say, well, if she wasn't on top of the roof or, or you know, there was no excuses. There was, this was flat out, I sinned. I admit my sin. I'm guilty of my sin before the Lord. Uh, you know, uh, he was already experiencing the guilt of the conscience of the sin because it was beating upon, upon his body. Uh, you know, a guilty conscience is something like uh, uh, like pain on the body. You know, when you uh, when you bump into your you kick the, the uh, wall or, your, or the furniture with your toe and you get that instant shot of pain and it tells you your body needs you to do something to fix it. Well, that conscience that the Lord puts in there, that the guilty conscience, lets us know that we need to fix it. We need to get rid of it before it's going to get worse. Um, But instead of imputing David's sin to him, David, give, David gives him righteousness. If we have that same thing through Jesus Christ, of course, for our salvation. If he gives us, imputes Christ's righteousness to us uh, and the guilt is gone. But that takes care of our salvation. But what about our fellowship? Fellowship is also hindered by sin. And sin needs to be confessed in order to have the fellowship that the Lord wants us to have. And once we have that confession once we admit to the sin that we bear uh god speaks in verses eight and nine um verse eight and nine god instructs david i will instruct you and teach you in the ways you should go i will guide you with my eye you will not be like the horse or the or like the mule, which is has no understandings, which have to be harnessed with a bit and a bridle, unless they will not come near. You know, that's what God said He will do. He wants David to, uh, in order to experience the joy that's going to be there, David has to let God instruct him, let God teach him, let God show him the way he should go. David has used his eyes to do what he wanted to do and all that did was bring things wrong david's eyes wandering eyes drove him wrongly drove him to think wrongly drove him to act wrongly drove him to do uh, just serious uh, serious terrible deeds uh you know but the god says let me instruct you let me teach you let me guide you with my loving eyes you know well, don't let you don't worry about your eyes wandering I'll guide your eyes. I'll be your eyes. Um, you know, David's faith needed to issue in obedience is what God's saying. Uh, you know, because faith and works, this is not for salvation. Faith and works go together. You know, God wants us to forgive us. He wants to restore us. But he doesn't want us to go back to the sin we were in. And that's what he didn't want David to do. He didn't want David to go back into it again. He wanted to see and let me teach and let me guide. And this is the lesson that David had learned that he wants to teach the people. You know, uh, you know, he when David gazed at Bathsheba and lusted after her, 
uh, he committed the sin of adultery. Then he plotted to kill her husband. And then he, you know, he just got continually going worse. And what David thinks he is, is a free man doing what he wants to do. And God says, no, you're like an animal that needs a bridle, that needs a bit. You're not doing freely what you need to do. You're acting like an animal. And that's what, this is not what God wants us to be. He wants us to be uh, objects of his affection. He wants us to be uh, the servants that we need to be. He wants us to experience the joy and the gladness and the re uh, relationship with him. And to walk around like an animal is not how that gets done. Uh, how it gets done is by letting him instruct, teach, and guide. Um, you know, uh, David started the song off in verse 1 and 2 when he came to the sanctuary and he began singing, the announcing that God had forgiven him. And here he closes it again with, with singing and asking all to shout out for joy and upright in heart for the Lord. Uh, he tells him, be glad, rejoice, shout for joy. Uh, that's what true confession is. True confession plus forgiveness plus obedience equals restoration and joy in the Lord. That's the lesson David was teaching and David promised to teach his teach through his uh, through Psalm 51. Uh, hope to see you uh, next week as we uh, go back into chapter 12. Thank you.